here with author and inventor Brenda Schwader. And Brenda is really excellent and known for collaborating with lots of different artists. Welcome, Brenda. Thanks. Hey, yeah. Katie. Glad to have you here. Good to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you again, too. Mm -hmm. And I love the project that you're going to make today because it uses a lot of different elements, and some of them are special to my heart, too. Yes, they are, and special to mine. Um, so last year, what I did was I did this special project. It's something I've been thinking about for a long, long time, of just collaborating with other people. And I thought, this is the year I'm going to do it. So I did a project called Collaborate, Think Friends in the Making. And I did all the wire. That was my thing. Mm -hmm. And then the other 27 artists did their thing, which is, you know, could have been clay or fiber or even photography. So it was a really good, uh, good project. Right. I remember seeing a lot of the pieces. Thank you. So this year we're going to do it again. It's called Collaborate 15. And so you're one of my collaborators. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for inviting me. Great. Great. So should we show them what we're doing? Let's do. Okay. Cool. So this is going to come in three different. Um, uh, stages, but I first wanted to show everyone what we're basically doing here is we're starting with one of your gorgeous um, bezeled or channeled bezels and we're going to take and fill those at first. But what we're going to do also is then make this frame around it and then use a capture to capture everything together. Great. Mm -hmm. You can see this one here. I've just kind of left this loose in here. We're gonna, we're, uh, we could glue this in later, but you can just see that, that little uh, capture along the back, um, and that's what's going to keep everything all ni nice and tidy. Now, just finish it off with a little bit of a, um, a fabric ribbon because that's, um, that gives it just a little bit of softness. Everything's so bright and shiny, right. and it just kind of gives your eye a place to rest. Looks really good together. Great. So where do you want to begin? So let's go here. We're going to fill those channel bezels. And I, st I like these ones with the little scallops. Those are my favorites. And um, you can see that I've ch you've chosen a lot of uh, a couple different ones. And some of the smaller ones, as you know, they're 25 millimeters. So we'll show you how to frame those later. But right now, what I've done is I've gone ahead and pre-made uh, a little bit of a spiral here. And we can put that right inside. And you're using a special braided wire, so it really has a lot of texture to it, too. It does. I love this braided wire. And it comes in a couple different gauges and colors. And this rose gold is actually my favorite. Really pretty. And you know how much it, it takes to impress me, because I love my steel. That's right. Yes, yes. So um, I did, and I pre-cut these in a couple different uh, gauges. And we can just fit them in there. It's really no. Um, you know, brain surgery or, or, or science to, to doing any of this and just fit them in there. But they're not going to, they're tension fit right now, but we're wearing them and that type of thing. We really need to have them adhered into there. So we're just going to mix up a little bit of resin. We've done that on a, other episodes, so I thought we would just kind of skip that, uh, but do that according to manufacturer's directions. And um, that's what's going to just hold that in there. You want to cure that overnight. That's one of my things is uh, just make sure that it's got enough curing time, Katie. Okay. Okay, cool. So um, another way that um, we've done that on, um, uh, that you saw in the beginning was I've taken this fun ribbon here and I've just cut up a little bit of it into these little schniblets. And it kind of gives us, once the resin gets in there, kind of a, a druzy kind of effect, sure which is does. really neat and, and it's kind of a fun way to cheat. So now what we can do is actually make the, uh, the frame on the jig. And this is what the jig looks like without the pattern templates on it. And you can see that it basically will just go onto any kind of work surface here and just gets battened down to that so they have a nice, um, nice anchored jig to work from, so it's nice and stationary. And then the pattern templates fit right over it, perfectly aligned. And then we just kind of, just kind of have um, pattern punchers, and we put these corner tacks in so everything just stays put. I have this part set up for this particular one, set up for the 35 millimeter, um, which is the larger of the bezels, and the 25. I'm telling you, like, you don't know. <laughs> no, <25. that's> okay. <laughs> and, and what you did, too, is you laid your bezel that you're going to work around on your vellum and drew your pattern so that you know mm -hmm. where to punch your holes, right? Exactly. And, and these are pieces. my big rounds, and so I basically just did, like, here, here we can see, I just put this on here and sit, and then this one was the one that fit, fit best. If we went up a little bit further, it was a little bit too loose. Okay, so I thought what we would do is show how to make the, the smaller one right okay. here. And this was, is with the one inch uh, big round. And I just left one to, so we can see how it, we would do this. This is the pattern puncher, and it punches right through that mark there, which shows you on the key. This is where the one eighth inch peg goes. 
and then we're going to just start screwing that guy, that little guy in. All right. I'm to start with my hand and then just get it all down in there. You know, and setting up a jig just does, does take a little bit of time, Katie, but you are so much far better off as far as replicating those forms. Right, you can make these consistent. again and again. Exactly. Millions of times if you want to. Okay, so I've pre-cut this wire to make the smaller frame. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just center this in between here. And I've got my swivel lock all set up. And what I like to do is bring this here and tighten this down so that I've got a nice tight fit. Okay. Yeah, you really lock it down in place so that you can work with it, especially exactly. when you're using a heavier gauge wire like this or when you're using your steel wire too. It's, it's great and it's uh, really wonderful. I've heard so many compliments on it because people with hand issues really do need it. And even if you don't, you have two hands to work with instead of one, um, you know, holding something down. Right. So in this, uh, what I've done with this frame is that I really f uh, felt like it needed to be twisted here. So we do one of my signature twist ties here and I'm just gonna keep it really close and tight in there and just give it one twist around. And um, that's sort of the fun thing that's gonna keep that together. And then these are sort of our built-in um, little bales that we, we're going to be using to tie our fiber through. And you can see I'm working about mid-peg, but I'm also working around each peg very tightly because I've got that, that shape on there, so I want to be able to replicate that. And, and by going around tightly, that's when everything is going to look like it should. So I'm going all the way around, and I'm really going to finish up just really getting these nice and tight in there and kind of bringing them back. Okay. Then I'm just gonna take and loosen this up and swivel it away. And that's when I get my nice cutters in there and I can use my lifter to get this. Sometimes these wanna give you a, a little bit of a trouble and that's because we went around them nice and tight. And it just flips off when it's ready, it's ready. It's ready. Yeah. So, and then I take my heavy, du my, um, my heavy duty cutters and okay. I think we have a pair right over here. Thanks, Katie. You're welcome. And then I'm going to go under for a second. Are you ready? Ready. I need to see this really close up. And I'm just going to take the back of my cutters, and I have it. This is almost like a keychain, so it goes around, um, you know, more than once. Right, kind of that split ring effect. Exactly, and that just gives us a little bit extra assurance. Okay. Good idea. Yeah. You learn um, by making the mistakes first, Isn't right? Isn't that the truth? <laughs> That's how I learn the most. Yeah. You know if it's not working. So I'm just going to cut, um, take that off. And then basically what we're doing is we can just take a little bit of a needle file later on. We won't do this now, but just going to get those edges a little bit softened there. So they're That's not... That's a good idea. You know, um, with the fiber um, part of it going through, sometimes that will um, not really scratch at you, but it's just good to get in the good habit of sure, know, finishing cleaning our things. Ends. Exactly. So then we just really have our bezel, our frame all ready to go. Um, these are gonna actually be pushed down a little bit, but you can see how simple that was. It right? is really simple, yes. Right, and if you didn't have uh, your wonderful finding to put into well, you it. Could you could frame anything. Yeah, you could just do whatever or hang a crystal right in there. So right. it's, it's a fun thing to have. Um, so now we can move on to the armature. Okay, that sounds good. My armature, I mean, this is kind of a capture. This is one of these things that I do a lot of because as a found object person who loves found objects, I'm always looking for ways to use wire to hang things off of my body. Right, because things <laughs> might not necessarily have a hole, so exactly. you can create this capture technique on anything. Right, and right. found objects mostly don't have holes, so we, we do like to do that. Um, and this one, I don't, it wasn't really a great place to put a swivel lock, that locking mechanism. Um, so we're just gonna kind of show you how to do it without one too. Here's my little start uh, area right here. This is a little pink um, starter area. And I'm just making an X. I could build in a, a bale here if I wanted to, but um, in this particular one, we've made the bale in the, in the frame, so we don't need to. So I'm just holding this with my hand, and I'm just gonna follow all of these little wire paths that's down here uh, with these little arrows. And I'm just gonna go up and around. And that first one, I'm just gonna take and pinch this 
And it looks like you're using about a 24 gauge, is that right? 22, 24? I think this is actually 20 gauge. All right. Katie. This is silver so filled, my new, my new favorite silver wire because I'm such a cheapskate. That I like to. <laughs> you can use it for everything. <laughs> Even with silver coming down a little bit, it's, it's, nice, to, it's nice to have an, an economical option. So I'm coming up and I've got all these, these numbered, one, two, three, four. And what I'm trying to do is keep toward the outside. I want this to be um, more of a, I don't know, not overlapping, I guess. Okay. And so I'm really keeping On some the outer even edges, tension. You mean. Exactly. And so, it's, but again, if you forget and just keep following that wire path, and you can see how nice that is. Another thing you need to worry about on the jig is that you have some depth going on here, so you want to make sure everything's on the same plane. So every once in a while, I kind of swoop down and see that everything is, is all kind of uh, tucked on that same depth there. Now here is the fun part. So we've got all this together. Obviously, if we put it up, take it up right now, it's just going to be wrangling around and, and springing. But what we're going to do is we're going to use these, these um, ties to secure it. And I'm going to go under again, get ready. All right. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just take, you can get your pliers here if you need them, but I think that this one we can just move right through. Oh, so you'll in just here. go right through the middle there. Mm -hmm. And you know what, Katie, you want to yeah, just hand sure. me one of the uh, pliers. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And here we go. And I'm just really pulling on that. Now, my, my first instinct when I was started to use a jig is that I wanted to. Um, take this up and off because we're used to doing all this That's hand right. work. But why not use the jig as a frame to keep everything in line while so we're, it on there while we're working, working it, right? Unless things are in your in your way. And in here, and this is a case where sometimes I, I like to do this um, one way or another. It just kind of depends on my mood sometimes. But I'm just going to pull this through here. And I'm just going to take this one and come the other way right here and just wrangle this all around. Now okay. I can do my trimming a little bit later, but I've got that all steady right there because I was able to anchor everything well, down. Let's really point right here too, to just show the part where you're wrapping right through the middle here. Mm -hmm. oh. um, and that way we can see in the middle there. Okay, great. Exactly where it's going all the right, way around. Exactly right down there. And that's on the thread pet and the wire path too, Katie. But before we take this up and off the jig, we're going to actually take um, just a chain nose pliers or a flat nose. And again, why not use the jig? We're just going to kind of just get these. See how nice that looks? Now we're just kind of like um, putting those right next to each other. And they can even overlap them a little bit because once we get them off and we temper them a little bit on our bench block, we're going to flatten those out again. But for right now, we're just getting everything in line and using the jig to help us do that. So it's got Perfect. some nice little prong ends on it too. That looks good. Yeah. Oh, and I should mention too that these are the one sixteenth micro pegs, and that just gives us a nice little tiny tip tiny here loop. that really helps us. Right. All right. So we're going to grab that wire lifter again. We don't need to loosen a swivel lock because we didn't use one this time. And this time, I think I might hold on to this so we don't lose our <laughs> our little X frame, right? Right. So what other kinds of things would you consider wrapping with an X-frame like this? That seems like a really useful It really piece. is. And, and you can see here, Katie, good, that these, um, these um, little portions right here, these are the 1 16th marks, which is what this was. This is just get, giving it um, more room for oh, the bigger bezel. But you could okay. put anything in here, even something that's drilled, if you just wanted a different look. Sure. Um, because it really is nice to kind of just have um, a little bit of an accent on it, on your piece. So what I do then is I just take um, a chain nose pliers, and I'm just going to kind of, you know, bring those back out and flatten them down but I've gotten them all aligned. And all right. we can just... Um, I like your tip for using silver filled too. It is a nice way to be able to save a little bit when you're working. I like silver filled and I, I've had good, uh, good luck with patining it and everything. So, you know, we would, we would get these nice and close in here and, and clip them off. But I also wanted to show you, just going to give it a little bit of temper because this is a piece that's going to do, be doing some work, is to just get it on here and just give it a few little taps. Okay. Looks good. Yeah. There we go. I'm going to trim up here. 
Or here we can take a look at your finished one here. Right, yeah, and so here's what it looks like finished. We do, and I did even go over that centerpiece too because I wanted that to not have too much um, girth on the back. It's gonna be on our, um, you know, on our chest and as we're wearing it, and so we want as little possible uh, okay. back there. So now we've got our two, our, all of our components, and of course this goes in there, and then this is gonna go on the back of here. But we need to make some marks first so we know where to come up and over. And it's always astounding to me how much more um, length we need to get it up and over than I think. So I always basically make them wrong. And then, learn <laughs> and then how make to them measure. right. <laughs> and learn how to measure. I think it's a spatial thing with me. Maybe other people would have an easier time of it. Um, but and we don't need both of these things, so what we're going to do is, is, and I sort of just try to get everything really symmetrical and, and um, go back and forth a few times. And then what I'm going to do is basically just give myself some markings. And the, it's all right with, um, and we can just move this out of the way here a little bit, is to get, um, is to use a very fine point Sharpie. Okay. And then sometimes I'll even, you know, go back and forth with this in when I'm actually making the marks. And I'm like, that couldn't have been right, but it has to be symmetrical. So I kind of try to even it out. That's a good idea. Yeah. This is also, I need a little trust issue with myself, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of get everything sort of in line so that I can kind of bring it up and over when I have, you know, everything together because it's going to be kind of fumbly for a while. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to make this my, my edge to bend against and I'm just bending right at that point of contact. But I'm not going all the way. And again here, I'm like, oh, that one's probably a little bit too short, so I'm rethinking it in my mind. Okay. <laughs> And here we go, we'll make these quicker. And then I want some prongs to come up and over. And as you know, Katie, we only need a very little bit of prong, but I kind of like the way that these were looking and giving the prong as a little bit more of a, um, a design element as well. Right, and just enough to make it a setting. Yeah, yeah. Plus right. you can use um, silver, you can use, and you see one of the, uh, the first samples that I did, we used steel because we had a black element in there. So now I'm just gonna kind of fit this in here. And here we go, I'm just getting everything in. And it's funny because, you know, you start doing this, pu pushing this over. Sometimes I keep it flat and sometimes not. And Good. you think, oh, I made it wrong, I made it wrong. And then all of a sudden it just starts to work. And I'm not sure why that is, but and maybe you it's- keep just adjusting just and adjusting. adjusting and adjusting. And then Good. it's like, oh my gosh, it did work. All right. <laughs> Great. Well, so the next thing what we need to do is put it on a string, right? You right. can't do and anything then, with this. Let's take a look at the finished one because we can see how you wound the ribbon right through the bail there. Exactly. So what we did is I just, cl I just clipped a little bit of this gross grain ribbon and I just thought it was kind of a nice contrast to the silver and, and again, just sort of like based it down a little bit in color. Um, and you know, if we string this through all, all through all these four um, loops, it's gonna look a little bit, um, battered, right? So I like to start from the center and just sort of give myself that center point. Oh, well, that's a good tip. Yeah. Um, again, because I did it wrong a couple times first. <laughs> and then we're just going to use that tip as a, as a self needle and then just pull that through. And you kind of want to do it in, in a little bit of an artful way, I guess, and just kind of make it a little bit more of a, um, almost like a, I don't know, a little pillow or something like that. Yeah, you really are creating a hanging sculpture. Yeah. So I'm just gonna kind of work, work, um, work its way out and already I'm getting frayed ends, but I know that I can clip those and, and use a little fray check uh, later on. And we can, we can finish these off again with the coils or just with a little knot. Okay. We can even put a, a clasp on, Katie, you if sure we wanted could. to. Mm -hmm. And then just sew those ends back, so. Here we go, just to show how that goes. There. And we kind of want to just work work those little loops out and just give it a nice kind of look. Yeah, well let's take a look at the finished one. And show us again too, in the middle here, this is a larger bezel that you use for this. Mm -hmm. But when you lift the crystal away, we can see the framework underneath. Exactly. And so some, pe some people might like that. A friend of mine also told me, you know, she said, why don't you just put that on top and, and have that be one of the um, variations as well. Yeah. 
-hmm. And you've also coiled and not or knotted the end of the ribbon to finish it. That exactly. looks great. There's two different ways you can do that. I learned a lot. There are a lot of techniques in this. We need to go back and watch this one again. <laughs> a lot of bang for your buck. Thanks. Thank you, Brenda. Mm -hmm.